What's up, YouTube's PZZSC in here. Uh, before I even get started with this video, I would like to go ahead and apologize for you guys. Uh, I'm not exactly feeling great. My throat is kind of hurting. I have a stuffy nose and a bit of a cough, so I might sound a bit crappy in this video, a bit scratchy, but I'm going to try and push through this video. And this is a video that I feel if I don't make anytime soon, I'll probably forget. And it's about the iPod Wi Fi issue, the iPod Touch 4th generation Wi-Fi issue, well, lots of people have been having this and Apple hasn't done anything about it. Well, I think I figured out a solution today and I'm going to share that with you and I want you guys to try it and see if it works for you. So, this is pretty interesting uh, solution and it's going to be hard for me to explain it. So I'm going to try and visual, I'm going to try and do a visual here. So I've got the paper here and I'm just going to draw it out for you guys, I guess. Um, so that way we can try this out, uh, see if I can explain it better this way. And I'm also, just so you know, I'm not going to edit this video, I'm just going to make this one steady shot. Uh, I might not even, I'll probably just upload it straight, but we'll see. So, sorry if it's kind of bad. But anyway, this here, this box represents your school or whatever, so we'll just make this beat, because this is not your house. But this box right here I'll even make it look like a house this is box A this is your house okay now this right here and it doesn't matter if um, your school or your workplace doesn't have Wi-Fi I'm just doing this because if it does have Wi-Fi then you'll need to do something but if it doesn't have Wi-Fi you're okay so anyway this here will represent the range of wireless from your, your workplace this right here is your range of wireless to your house. Alright, and obviously the space in between is nothing. Alright, so, and uh, lastly, we're, because the iPod is so massive, we're just going to use this mic, uh, SD card to represent it. It's 2 gig from our Walgreens. Okay, so, here's how this is going to work. So, this is something that works pretty flawlessly for me. It seems to make my wireless work pretty much you know, flawless. Um, if I do exactly what I'm going to show you to do, it's it's kind of, you know, it's a bit of an interesting solution, but you'll see. Because it does, you know, involve you, you know, you can't do this straight from your house. Obviously, this is going to be part of, you're going to have to make this part of your day-to-day -day routine, I guess. You're going to have to make this a habit. So, anyway, let me go ahead and show you it. Alright, so you're at your house. You can have your, you know, you're at your house and, you know, you're getting ready to leave for your school or whatever, so you can go ahead and do that. So you get here. Once you're here, you can do whatever you want to. You can get on your iPod, you can check your email, browse the internet, you know. Do you can do whatever you want to do on the internet. As you know, obviously if it works fine at your workplace. But when we're leaving your workplace is when you're gonna have to get more involved with this because once you get out of your workplace, your iPod will maybe asleep in your pocket. It you may Excuse me, it may be actually using it at the moment, but once you leave the um, wireless zone of your workplace, once you leave the wireless range of your, uh, you know, business's network or whatever, you want to turn it on and you want to make sure that it disconnects from the internet. Now, I don't think this is a huge deal because I don't really do this very much, but it is a good idea to make sure it says, you know, if you go, obviously, sorry. You know, if you don't know how to check that, just turn your iPod on and go into settings. And where it's set, and I'm not going to focus, but where it says Wi-Fi here, it should say not connected. So, that's that. So turn it on and make sure it disconnects. Alright, after that, put it asleep. Now, if you're a passenger, you can, on your way back to your house, you can use your iPod for whatever you need to in the car. But obviously, if you're not, if you're driving, you know, don't do that. Uh, but once you, or before you get in within range of your house, what you want to do, if you're using your iPod, obviously if you're a passenger, maybe you're playing a game or something, turn it off. And again, I don't know if the, even this is necessary. Well, yeah, turn it off because uh, this will more reinforce the uh, chances of it working. So turn it off or put it in sleep mode. Don't turn it off. Just put it asleep. Stick it in your pocket or, you know, you, you just stick it in your pocket. Forget about it. Okay, so put it to sleep and forget about it. Once you're within range of your Wi-Fi network, and once you're inside your house, go ahead, take your iPod out of your pocket, and set it off to the side. But you might want to set it near you or something. And after about 5, 10, or maybe even 15, 20 minutes of just sitting there in idle mode, you know, or in sleep mode, you know, just sitting there idle, not being used, 
your iPod will, if you have any notifications available, it will start pulling them in, and you'll start hearing, hearing your emails coming in. You'll start hearing, you'll start seeing your Facebook notifications coming in. You'll start seeing, you know, your Twitter feed and all that stuff popping in. Once that happens, that is a good sign. That means you can use your iPod. I mean, yeah, you can use your iPod, but, you know, just to be on the safe side, go ahead and let it idle for maybe another minute or two, or maybe even three. Uh, but usually, once it starts pulling in your notifications, and if you don't have any notifications available for whatever reason, um, then I'd say you should give it, uh, you know, once you initially get in your house, set it down and don't touch it for, like, 10 to 20 minutes. Like, just don't even press the home button, you know, don't turn it on or whatever. And uh, after about, <coughs> excuse me, 10 to 20 minutes of it sitting in idle mode, uh, the iPod should work fine on the internet. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. So I'm going to go into Safari here. Let's load up my mobile channel. Just because I haven't really loaded that much on here. Good. I'm going to hit go. And you'll see it starting to pull it in. And this is a channel I don't visit much on here. Let's even pull in the full version. How about that? And you can see, it we're loaded it perfectly. If you'd like to check out my mobile channel, it's uh, most likely in the description. There you go. I can even go over here. Hit there. <coughs> and check out my channel. You can see it'll start pulling that in. And this is, uh, not only is it my channel, so I get all the editing options, but it is a, a bit more of a bigger channel because of uh, well the background as you can see and such. Uh, but yeah, um, so go ahead and try it. I hope I did not confuse you guys too much in this video. If I did, I apologize. But I'm gonna have to uh, go ahead and cut this video short. So if it worked for you, post a comment. And uh, if it just seemed too confusing for you, then also post a comment about that, and I'll. You know, if I just get two, lots of comments from people saying, oh, it's too confusing, I have no idea what you're talking about, then I will obviously remake this video when I feel better. It's just right now, I just feel if I don't make this video now, I'll, I'll probably forget. But there you guys go. That's all. I'm going to go and let you guys go now. So thanks for watching. See you in my next video. And give it a try. Adios.